Okay, let's start with number five, chapter 17, heart. First critical thinking question here says, explain why it is sufficient to replace the ventricles but not the atria in artificial heart transplant. Now, artificial heart transplant is a good thing, especially when you have a hard time finding a real heart or a real organ. You can use a synthetic one or um, temporarily usually, but there can be risk of rejection a lot of times in artificial heart transplant, so it is risky. But there are some times when um, something goes really wrong, you just can't do anything about it, but the best thing is to do a transplant. The question here though says, why is it sufficient to replace ventricles and not the atrium? If you think about it, you have your atria and your ventricles. Your atria has this ability to uh, contract by itself because they have these pacemaker cells in there, we call them SA node, remember that generates this action potentials that make it contract by itself. So atria contracts and the blood is pushed from the atria to your ventricles. If something goes wrong with your atria and your atria fibrillates, we call it, that means it's not contracting properly, so the contractions are not rhythmically done. In that case, you will have this volume of blood being um, sent from your atria to your ventricles, maybe in different times and months, but still, as long as you have your valves open, you know, the AV valves from atria and ventricular area, as long as the valves can, like the bicuspid or tricuspid valve, you know, can open and close, you will have enough blood pushed down to your ventricles, which is why we say that the ven ventricles do not depend on the atrial contraction alone, which is why uh, if anything does happen to your atria and it fibrillates, it's not a big thing. You will not have to go for a heart transplant. But if, for example, something happens in your ventricles, ventricles, that's a big deal. Imagine your ventricles not contracting rhythmically. We call it ventricular fibrillation, and that is danger. Usually, we tell them uh, to go for a heart transplant. The reason is your ventricles pump blood all over to your tissues. Your body tissues depend on the blood that's pumped from your ventricles. If your ventricles are not contracting properly, so you, you have one contraction and then a slow one and then another one, you know, this irregular contraction will cause this volume of blood to be uh, sent out at different times and the pressure will also differ. So you won't have enough pressure to send the blood all over to your body and you won't have enough volume either and the timing will also throw it off. So a lot of these problems happen when you have ventricular fibrillation and it is deadly. And usually the best thing to do for that is to just go for a transplant. For atrial fibrillation, you could just use drugs, for example, to control your um, rhythmic uh, contraction. Usually they give electrical shock or chemicals to uh, fix that problem. Another thing that can hap happen from your atrial fibrillation is pooling of blood that can cause a blood clot, but by giving an anticoagulant, you can easily solve that problem. So basically the answer to this question is that um, when you are thinking of replacing atria versus ventricles, you need to uh, replace your ventricles in artificial heart transplant, but atria um, fibrillation or any abnormality won't be a big problem, and you can you can actually live with it normally unless it's that bad. There is a risk that atrial fibrillation causes stroke, but we won't get into that for this particular answer here. Next one is number six. It says, what happens to cardiac output following the ingestion of a large amount of fluid? This is a fun one. So if you have a large amount of fluid, for example, you took some, I don't know, you drank too much. In that case, this, um, there is this mechanism that will regulate this blood volume to bring it back to normal. So whenever you have large amount of fluid, so you have large amount of blood volume, um, first thing that you th you're thinking of is your negative feedback. 
or the regulation of it. So when there is a large deviation, it will uh, your body will try to fix that. So the increase in blood volume will cause an increase in venous return to the heart. And Starling's law states that the greater the volume of blood entering the heart during diastole, the greater the volume of blood being ejected during your uh, systolic contraction, or we call them that the stroke volume. So the larger the blood entering the heart, the bigger your stroke volume is, and vice versa goes for that. So an increase in venous return will increase the stroke volume or increase your blood pressure. Now, when you have an increase in your blood pressure, remember again, what happens in regulations is your baroreceptors, they will detect it. And to prevent that increase in blood pressure, what they're trying to do is bring the blood pressure down. So they will send this parasympathetic stimulation of the heart, which will bring down the stroke volume and your heart rate, and it will decrease your blood pressure in the end, which is why increased stroke volume from drinking too much won't cause a dramatic increase in blood pressure. So we have the baroreceptors and the parasympathetic stimulation to thank for, right? So the next question is number 10. This talks about a doctor. A doctor lets, um, sorry, a doctor lets you listen to a patient's heart with a stethoscope at the same time that you feel the patient's pulse. Once in a while, you hear two heartbeats very close together, but you feel only one pulse beat. Later, the doctor tells you that the patient has an ectopic focus in the right atrium. It says to explain why you hear two heartbeats very close together. And also it says the doctor tells you that the patient exhibits a pulse defici deficit. Explain why a pul pulse deficit uh, occurs. So that we have few questions in one question itself. So you can see this is how usually critical thinking questions are. I can put uh, sub questions under the main questions and you know tie it down with that question there. So the doctor here, when uh, he listens to the patient's heartbeat with the stethoscope and the pulse, what happens was you hear these two heartbeats very, very close together, but the pulse beat here is one. We call this um, the ectopic focus. Another word for it is ectopic pacemaker. Just like your pacemaker in your uh, essay note, we have an, another uh, pacemaker called ectopic. The reason ectopic does not affect your normal SA node activities because that takes over it. But if something happens to your SA node, then your ectopic pacemaker will start working as well. And when two of them work at the same time, you know that the, the uh, contractions won't be together anymore. So the atria will not have normal uh, rhythms or normal contractions anymore. In that case, uh, if the atria is not beating normally, we call it atrial fibrillation again, and um, if the atria is sending out this blood volume to the ventricles, remember the valve it sends it down through is your AV valve, and the other valve that the blood is sent out from is your SL valve. So there are these two valves. The heart sound you listen to are actually the closing of these valves. So the LUP and the DUB is the S1 and S2. The sound 1 and sound 2 are the closing of your AV and semilunar valve. So the first sound is when your atria contract and you have this blood going down to your ventricles. Next one is when the ventricle contracts and your blood goes out to your um, aorta, then the semilunar valve can close and that makes the other sound. In this case though, since your atria has another ectopic pacemaker which is generating this action potentials along with your SA node, you have these two kinds of generations of action potentials at the same chamber that causes this blood to be uh, pumped into uh, from your ventricles in very abnormal way. So it's not your ventricles when it's pumping the blood out, it's not keeping up with the timing. So the closing of the valve 
is not uh, going with you know normally as um, 